In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up one of those sticky floating buttons on your WordPress website. They're great to use for call to actions and more. Let's do this. Hey, it's Ozzy here from thecallmehoz.com where I talk about the tools that I'm using to generate income online as a solopreneur. And in this channel, I share tutorials and all the great tools that I keep finding. So if this helps you in any way, please subscribe and I'll keep you posted. Okay, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up one of those sticky floating buttons on your WordPress blog. Those are perfect to use for call to actions and even for sending traffic to a certain page if you have an offer or something like that. A lot of people use notification bars to draw the attention of visitors. So using a sticky floating button can seem quite innovative and it's certainly going to catch people's attention. So let's set one up. Okay, so here we are on my test blog. I've just set this up online. So what I'm going to do is go to the dashboard and go to plugins. I'm going to install a plugin called Buttonizer. And this is a free plugin and let's activate. So this is a plugin that I've used a couple of times on different websites and is pretty effective. Now, if you're going to use the free version like I have in the past, then just go down here and click skip. And that's all you need to do. There is no opt in. You don't have to subscribe to anything. You can see here on the top that you can get tips. So let's click on that. And the first tip is exit intent. This is where the phone begins. If I click again, we get another tip. A button can only have one action, but you can choose out more than 25 actions. I'm not sure what choose out means, but there you go. Okay, so we don't need to look at the tips. This is fairly intuitive. You'll see here that you can set your new button to show on mobile as well as desktop. So at the moment, they are both selected. If I click on desktop, you'll see that it grays out. I don't want to do that, of course. I'm going to click on desktop again, but there may be instances where you may not want your button to show on mobile. So that's what that's for. Okay, so let's create a new button. Let's go to settings. And you'll see here that we have a button action and we can add a URL. This is what I meant before by you can have a call to action on the button and send traffic to a certain page if you have an offer on your website. So let's just type in uh, google.com because I don't have a page to send people to right now. And what we are going to do is open that in a new tab. That way people will still be on our blog, but they'll go to wherever we're sending them to. Of course, if you were doing this in your own website and you were sending people to an offer on your website, I wouldn't open a new tab. I'd just let the offer page load over the original page. Okay, so let's continue. We have device visibility. We can see that it's showing on both mobile and desktop. Let's click on position. And by default, you can see that it's set to appear on the right at the bottom. Now, a lot of websites, especially here in the UK, have the GDPR cookie consent message. And a lot of websites also have live chat these days or chat bots. And those are typically positioned in the bottom right. So because of that, I would choose the middle of the page on the right hand side. That's pretty effective for most websites. Of course, it depends on what the page actually looks like. Sometimes it's effective to have it at the top and sometimes it's effective to have it at the bottom. Now, to give you two real world examples on a dentist website that I set up many years ago, I had this on the bottom right and it showed a telephone and the call to action was call us and the phone number. And that was quite effective in the bottom right. And on another website, I had it on the top right. And that was sending traffic to the Instagram page. So it was almost like a social icon, but obviously there was more contrast between this and the page. So it was more noticeable. So you have a lot of versatility with the free version of the plugin as to whatever you want to position this. I mean, you can even position it in the middle and that might work for some websites, for some pages. I could think of one example. If you have a page that only has a hero image and nothing else, so that's a page that you cannot scroll. You may have a blank area in the middle, deliberately, of course, 
so that you can place this button with the call to action. OK, so that might be quite effective. OK, so for this one, though, I'm going to use the right hand side and the middle of the page. And you'll notice that next to these positions, horizontal and vertical, we have advanced controls. So if I click on advanced, you see that you have more options. OK, and of course, with the pro version, you can actually position it to exactly where you want down to the pixel, which I don't really think it's necessary. OK, so let's go to the next panel, which is animation. And here we have the type of style that we have. So it can be a square. Or it can be a rectangle. And the rectangle enables you to add some text, which makes it quite effective, especially for calls to action. So I'm going to leave it like that. I want to choose an animation. Let's have a look. The buttonizer hello. OK, I'm going to leave it at that. And for the label, I'm going to type in click now for free stuff. I have to try and make it compelling. OK, so free stuff. You can't go wrong with that. OK, so let's go to style here. You can change the colors of the button. So I'm going to change that to a nice bright orange. OK, I'm not going to spend too much time on this. OK, and you have control over the border radius, which is quite a nice touch. And here we have an icon selection. So here I'm going to type in telephone. OK. And here you can see that we can change the color of the label if we want to. Now that's all in style. If I go back to general and go back to label, I'm actually going to change that to colors. Uh, in fact, contact details. Let's make it more relevant to the icon that I'm using. Click for contact details. That's a bit better. OK, and let's go to the advanced tab. And here you can see that you have custom class IDs if you want to use uh, CSS, but that's a pro feature. Now you have time schedules. And again, that's a pro feature. And that can be quite cool for some websites if you only want to show this call to action at certain times of the day. Then you have page rules. Again, this is a pro feature. You can show this button on certain pages and maybe not on other pages. For example, your legal pages like terms and conditions and privacy policy. You may not want that button there. Then you have a timeout and scroll. Again, these are pro features and you have exit intent, which, of course, as you could probably guess, is a pro feature. OK, so let's publish that. And then let's check out what our website looks like with this button. And here it is. Click for contact details. And you can see that I have the hover color there. Now, when I scroll down the page, that stays there in the middle, just as we intended. OK. And if I click on that, that takes me to Google and it opens the page on a different tab. Now, if I go back to the buttonizer and go to general and position and put that on the bottom of the right and publish. I think that actually would look better in this scenario because we don't have anything else taking up the bottom of the right hand corner. So you can see the result. It's very eye catching. Of course, you can use colors very effectively here to make sure that you contrast against whatever is on the page background. It's very effective and very quick and easy to set up. Now, for more tips and tutorials like this, please subscribe to the channel and that way you don't miss a thing. But in the meantime, take it easy and I shall see you in the next video.